In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this in After Effects. Welcome to this tutorial. This is Benoit Farin for Ben Explorer. You can apply this effect to virtually any text or any shape. I'm using the Saber effect. This is a free plugin that is being developed by Video Copilot. For all the details on how to get and how to install the Saber effect, check the introduction part of this tutorial. I provide the link to the introduction in the comments section. This is the first part of a three-part tutorial. In the first part, I will show you how to apply the Saber effect to text and display each letter sequentially. I will use a script to reverse the orientation of mask paths and I will create a custom background using fractal noise. All right, let's get started. I'm going to create a new composition. I am calling it main. I'm using this HDTV 1080 preset. It's 1920 by 1080. And I'm going to make this composition seven seconds long and just press OK. So let's create some text. This text could represent your logo or a title, for example. And I will type Ben X for this exercise. This is my logo. And I'm using the font Arial Bold. I want the text to be rather large, so 500 pixels is good. And the color doesn't matter. I want the text to be centered to the composition. I could just guess and position the text with a mouse, but I'll use the Align panel since it provides that functionality. So I navigate to Window and select the line. And from the Align panel, click both Align horizontally and vertically. The Saber effect works on masks. So I'm going to convert this text into masks. Right-click on the text and select Create Masks from Text. This creates a new layer and applies the masks to it. Let's have a quick look at those masks. First, make sure to enable Toggle Mask and Shake Path visibility. And then select this layer expand the layer and expand its masks. See, I have a series of masks that reconstructs the text that was created initially. The masks do follow the shape of each letter. Most letters have a single path, except letter B. It has three paths, two inner paths and one outer path. Now I can turn off toggle mask and shape path visibility and apply the Saber effect from the effect menu under Video Copilot. I'm going to tweak this a bit, go to Customize Core and switch Core Type to Layer Masks. The intensity is a bit too bright, so I'll pull it down to 20 or so. Great. The Saber effect now reveals the text. I'm going to animate the drawing of the text. Back to Effects Panel. And within the Customize Core section, play with the End Offset attribute. That kind of draws the text, but the Saber effect traces all masks simultaneously. And I want to trace each mask sequentially. Saber is applied to a layer that contains several masks. And because of that, all masks are drawn simultaneously. So instead of a single layer with a series of masks, I need a series of layers with a single mask each. So I need to rearrange things. First, remove the Saber effect from this layer. Now let's have a look at those masks. I have a single layer which contains a series of six masks, but instead I need a series of layers and each layer should have a single mask. Select the layer and duplicate it five times. Just hit Ctrl D. And now I have six layers, as many layers as I have masks. I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping and rename those layers. I rename each layer to the name of one of the masks that shows up here. Start from the top. Rename the first three layers to B as the letter B shows up three times. That's because letter B was split into three masks. Rename the fourth layer E, the fifth layer N, and the last layer X. I now have a series of six layers, B, 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 E, N, X, but each of these layers contains six masks, and we only want one mask per layer. The topmost layer B should have a single mask then, and it should be one of the B masks. The second layer should have a single mask too, 
and it should be the second B mask and so on for each layer. So click on the top layer, make sure to expand the masks of this layer. I want to keep this mask only, so select the other five and hit delete. Onto the second layer, expand the masks. I want to keep the second mask, select all, and select the second mask and delete. And I do this for each of the six layers. I'm now going to apply the saber effect to the topmost layer B. Select the top layer, go to Effect, Video Copilot, and select Saber. Look for Core Type under Customize Core and switch it to Layer Masks. Decrease the intensity to 20 or so, and now the path shows up. We already know that changing the end offset value does update the path. I'll zoom in a bit, here we go. That's what we are looking for. Let's add a couple of keyframes to end offset so the shape updates over time. Set the current time indicator at the start of the timeline. Alt click the stopwatch to add the keyframe at time zero and change the end offset value to zero. Now move up in time, say to frame 10, and change the end offset value to 100%. This creates a second keyframe. And the path shows up as we scrub through the timeline. Perfect. Remember that we want to apply the effect to each shape sequentially. So we'll need to adjust the keyframes as we copy the effect to each layer. Select the first layer and click U to reveal the keyframes. The mask path starts to draw at zero and is fully visible at frame 10. Tracing the mask path on the second layer should start when the first mask is fully visible. In other words, the tracing should start at frame 10 and the shape should be fully visible at frame 20. Select the topmost layer, move the current time indicator to the second keyframe, use J and K keys on your keyboard to move between keyframes. J moves to the previous keyframe and K moves to the next. So I am at the second keyframe. Select the saber effect and copy it. Now select the second layer and paste the effect. Hit U to reveal the keyframes on layer 2. The tracing of the second shape will start at frame 10 and will complete at frame 20. Let's run a small test. Move the current time indicator at time 0 and slowly run through to frame 10. All good so far. Now moving up in time. Oh, something is just not working right here. The first mask is visible, but the second isn't showing up at all. I missed the setting when I applied the saber effect to the first layer. So select the first layer, go to the effect panel, search for render settings. Here it is, expand it. Look at composite settings. It is set to black, change it to transparent. Let's start over then and copy again the effect from the first layer make sure that the current time indicator is set at the second keyframe position. Select the second layer, paste the effect. Now things are looking a bit odd, but that's okay. We will fix this soon. And let's hope that this is working now. So scrub through the timeline. The first shape is fine and the second too. So that's much better. Let's copy the effect over to the next four layers. With the use of shortcut keys, this can be done fairly quickly. So let's go then. Select the second layer, hit U to reveal the keyframes on layer 2, hit K to move to the last keyframe, select layer 3, paste the effect, and now just repeat the process. Hit U to reveal the keyframes of the selected layer, layer 3, hit K to move to the last keyframe, select the next layer, layer 4, paste the effect, and on to the next layers, U for keyframes, K moves to the last keyframe, select the next layer and paste. I now have a saber effect applied to each of these six layers. Let's scrub through the timeline to verify what we have achieved so far. The first inner shape shows up and the second and the outer shape and letter B is now fully visible. On to letter E and now N and finally X. That's pretty good. The effect now applies to each mask sequentially. We nailed it down. Great. But let's take a closer look at what happens as we are scrubbing through the timeline. 
The first two paths are drawn clockwise, but notice that the outer path of letter B is drawn counterclockwise, and the remaining shapes all show up counterclockwise. This is not consistent, and certainly does not look natural. I want those paths to draw clockwise for all masks. Now, orientation is defined by the mask paths themselves, so we need a way to change the orientation of those paths. But there is a bit of bad news here. Unfortunately, After Effects does not provide a command for changing the orientation of a mask path. But wait, I wrote a script that can fix that for us. We will not surrender, right? I noticed that I haven't given a name to my project, neither did I ever save it. I am going to save it to my desktop under the My Project folder, and I am going to set the name to Laser Text. A script is a simple set of commands that tell After Effects to run specific actions. We will look at scripts in more details in a future tutorial. A script in After Effects is run from the File Scripts menu. From here, you can either select Run Script File, and a dialog prompts you for the location of the script to run. Or you simply select the script that you want to run from the list that shows up in the menu. The scripts that are listed here are those that I have installed on my system. Your list is probably different. I implemented a script that reverses the orientation of a mask path. The script is available for download. I provide all the information in the Google Doc. See the link in the description below. Follow the instructions to download the script file. The file is a text file with a JSX extension. You can open the file in any text editor if you want to take a look at what the script does. The installation instructions are straightforward. All you need to do is copy the file to a folder of your choice. All the details are available in the Google Doc. Leave me a note if you have any trouble with the script file. Now that the script is available on your system, let's jump in and fix the orientation of those mask paths. The orientation of both inner paths of the letter B is fine, so I won't touch those. The orientation of the outer shape is wrong, I want it to go the other way. Select layer 3. That layer contains the outer mask path of letter B, and expand the layer and its mask. Click Mask B to select it. We can run the script on the selected mask path, navigate to the File menu, Scripts, and from here you can either select Run Script File and navigate to the folder that contains the script uh, that you've downloaded, or simply select the script from this list. The name would show up here if you chose to copy the script to the Scripts folder in After Effects. Refer to the instructions uh, that are available in the Google Doc um, on how to set this up. In my case, the script appears here. So I'll just click on the script and the script runs. And when done, the script confirms it was run on one path. Let's check the outer path of the letter B, scrubbed through the timeline. Perfect, the orientation changed and it matches the orientation of the inner shapes. Let's now change the orientation of paths E, N, and X. I want them to run clockwise as well. Instead of doing what I just did on a single path, I will select multiple mask paths and run the script once on the selected paths. Select the three layers, E, N, X, and hit the M key on your keyboard. This expands the mask paths of each layer. Now select the mask path for letter E, press Ctrl, and select the mask paths under N and under X. I now have three mask paths selected. Navigate to File, Scripts, and select Reverse Mask Path from the list. The script confirms that it was run on three mask paths. Let's scrub through the timeline now, and voila! The orientation of each mask path is consistent. They are all showing up clockwise. By the way, in case you make a mistake, you can always undo the script operation. Just go to Edit and undo the reverse operation. We are making progress. But if we look closely, we still have a little problem. See, the drawing of the path here starts at an awkward location. And this is quite obvious for letter E. The drawing starts here, from this node on the shape,
but I want to start at the top left of the E shape. In fact, I want each shape to start drawing from the top left whenever possible. To do this, we'll need to change the position of the first point of the mask path, which is also referred to as the first vertex. Let's start with E. First, make sure that the mask and shape path visibility is turned on. Now, the path is revealed when E is selected. Zoom in onto the E shape and look a little closer. Notice this point is slightly highlighted. This is the first vertex. It is the first point of this mask, and the drawing starts from this point. I want the shape to start drawing from here instead, so I need to change the first vertex location of this path to this point. Simply right-click the node you want to set as the first vertex. From the pop-up menu, select Mask and Shake Path, and then click Set First Vertex. This node now becomes the first vertex for this path. Let's see what happens now. Scrub through the timeline and watch for E. OK, this is looking good. The drawing starts from the top left. We can now run the process on other paths. So let's revise them one by one. Select the first layer. The first vertex of the inner path is almost at the top left, but not quite. So right click the top left node, select Mask and Shape Path, and then click Set First Vertex. The same is true for the second inner path, so right click here and select Set First Vertex. And verify each layer. This is the outer path of B, the drawing starts here. If it doesn't start on the top left, then fix it. E is OK, we fixed it earlier. I will address N, the first vertex is currently here and I want it there, so right click the point and select Set First Vertex. And lastly, let's polish X, same thing. Right click this node and select Set First Vertex. This makes things a bit more consistent and natural. I can now turn off the mask and shape path visibility. OK, let's scrub through the timeline. We are getting close. I will take a minute and organize things a little. I don't need the original text layer anymore, so I'll remove it. I'm going to move these layers into their own composition. Select them all, right click and select Precompose. In the New Composition dialog, set the comp name to Letter Masks, check Open New Composition, and click OK. The new composition, Letter Masks, is now selected and open. And we get to see our six layers here, each of which is representing one of the mask path that forms our piece of text. Now, remember, each layer draws over 10 frames currently. We have a total of six layers. So the text draws over 60 frames, or at 29.97 frames per second, the text draws over 2 seconds. Now, this is totally fine, but I do want to control the duration of the drawing of the text. I might want to draw the text over a period of 3 seconds instead of the 2 seconds that we have currently. So 3 seconds at 29.97 frames per second represents about 90 frames. Given that we have 6 layers here, a single layer completes its drawing over 15 frames, so I could adjust the keyframes on my layers, but that's not an ideal solution. This would be tedious, and I'd have to do this anytime I want to change the duration. So let's see what we can do. I'm going to work on the topmost layer B. With the first layer selected, look for End Offset. It hides under Customize Core. The keyframes control the drawing of the path, and we currently have 10 frames between each keyframes that defines the time to draw the mask path for this first layer. I will replace this with an expression, so remove both keyframes. I'll click the stopwatch to generate an expression. We need some room here, so I'll expand this area. Just place the cursor here, click and drag until you have sufficient space to work from. This should be good enough. Now I'm going to replace the content with a new expression. You can either replicate what I'm typing here. You can also copy the entire expression from a Google Doc. See the link in the description. The code is available under End Offset Expression Step 1 in the doc. Now a quick explanation of this expression. 
draw duration is equal to 3. We use this to tell the expression to draw the text over a period of 3 seconds. Draw mask duration is the time to draw a single path. So I'm dividing draw duration by the number of masks that we have on this composition. Note that the expression will eventually set the end offset value to the value of the variable val. The variable val is set to 0 by default and will only increase after a certain time. And that time is calculated here and stored in the variable wait for. The variable wait for is calculated based on the time it takes to draw a single mask path multiplied by the index of the layer to be drawn, minus 1. So, for example, consider the first layer. Its index is equal to 1, so wait for is equal to 0. As soon as the playhead starts, at the very first frame, the variable val increases immediately. Now let's consider the second layer. The index is 2, so wait for is equal to one time draw mask duration. So the variable val starts to increase once the playhead reaches draw mask duration. In other words, the second mask path starts to draw when the first path is fully visible. And the same logic applies to the next layers as their index value increases. Okay, there is no magic here. And offset is a percentage, so the variable val is a linear interpolation from 0 to 100. Okay, now I have a new version of the Saber effect for this layer, and I'm going to copy it to each layer. And since I don't have to worry about the keyframes anymore, I'm going to copy this version of this effect to all layers at once. Select the effect from the first layer, copy it, then select all layers at once except the first one, and paste. I'm quite eager to see what we've got so far. Scrub through the timeline. Suspense, right? Hey, things are looking pretty good. And why not change the draw duration now? As you can see, the text draws over 3 seconds currently. Head over to the end offset expression of the first layer. And let's change draw duration from 3 to 4 seconds. I changed the effect on layer 1, I need to copy it over to the other layers so they get the same changes. This is quick and easy, select the effect, copy, select the other layers, paste, and now scrub through the timeline. The text is fully visible at the 4 second mark. What do you think? That's pretty cool, no? In the next tutorial I'm going to show you how to change the value for duration without the need to update this expression. But for now, we have set the basis, and things are working fairly fine. Not bad at all, but see, the text starts to draw at the very beginning of the timeline, at the very first frame. I would like to customize the starting time of the drawing of the text. I may want to create an introduction, or add an effect, or an animation, for instance. In which case, I'd want to start to trace the text after a certain period of time. This will be quick. All we need to do is tweak our existing end offset expression and we'll be done. Make sure to have the letter masks composition selected. As before, I'm going to work on the first layer, so select it. Hit the letter E twice on your keyboard. EE displays the expressions for this layer. Let's review the end offset expression. Here it is. At the top of the expression, add start at equals 1. I want to start the drawing after 1 second. Then slightly change the way the wait for variable is calculated. After the equal sign, add start at plus. So we now have wait for equals start at plus index minus one time draw mask duration. Just remember that you can copy this code from the Google Doc, see the link in the description, and look for end offset expression step two in the doc. And once again, let's make sure that the changes are applied to the next layers also. So copy the new version of this effect to the remaining layers. Scrub through the timeline. The start at variable in the expression defines when the text starts to draw. Nothing happens for the first second. The text starts to draw at the first second mark. The draw duration variable defines the time it would take for the full text to draw. I gave it the value of 4 seconds, so the text is fully drawn as the current time indicator reaches 5 seconds. 1 second delay at the beginning, and 4 seconds to draw the text. In the next tutorial, I will show you how to change the start at variable from a UI control without the need to manually update this expression. Alright, 
we have one last topic to cover. We need a background. You can certainly bring in an image of your choice, but I like to take a few minutes and build one from scratch using the fractal noise effect. The fractal noise effect is probably one of the most used effects in After Effects. I won't go into an exhaustive demo of the fractal noise effect. This effect has endless possibilities. But fractal noise can be used to create fancy backgrounds and fairly quickly. So let's go. Create a new composition, name it background. I'll make its duration the same as our main comp, 7 seconds, and click OK. Create a new solid, name it background, and make it comp size. Click OK. Now head over to the Effects and Presets panel and add a gradient ramp effect. I will change the shape from linear to radial. Set the start of ramp coordinates to the center of the composition. The comp width and height are 1920 by 1080, so the center coordinates are 960 by 540. And set the end of ramp to 0 and 540. I want the start color to be the same as the color theme that is currently applied to the text. So temporarily switch to the letter masks composition, select any layer, search for the glow color and get the color value from the swatch. I'll copy the hex value from here and click cancel. Switch back to the background composition and expand effects, gradient ramp, click the start color swatch and paste the hex value. The end color should be black, click the color swatch and select black. Now I'm going to add a fractal noise effect to the layer. Type fractal noise in the search box and drag it over to the background layer. Set fractal type to turbulent smooth. I'll switch noise type to linear. I'll set composition to one, expand transform, then uncheck uniform scaling. Width, make it 30. Height, crank it up to about 1700. That seems fine. Now let's go down to evolution. I'm going to animate it. So scrub to time zero and click the stopwatch to create a keyframe. And scrub to the end of the timeline and make it two revolutions. This creates a second keyframe. Switch blending mode to soft light and finally set contrast to 60. This is okay, but a little too bright, I think. So let's apply a curves effect and tune this brightness down a bit. From the effects and presets panel type curves, here it is, and apply it to the background layer. I'll pull the RGB curve down and I want to tone this down quite a bit. Down here, that looks fine. Let's add some depth to the background. From the project panel, select the background composition and duplicate it. Rename both background compositions to background 1 and background 2. I want to parent the colors of the backgrounds so that when I choose to change the color of the main background, the second background picks it up automatically. To do this, I will need access to the effect that is applied to background 1 as I work with background 2. So open background 1. From the effect controls panel, enable the little lock icon. This ensures that this effect, which is applied to background 1, remains here as I switch to background 2. Then open background 2 from the project panel and open the effects control panel. Select the background layer and hit the E key on your keyboard. This reveals the effects that are applied to the layer. Expand the gradient ramp effect and then notice the stopwatch at the left of the start color. Alt click on the stopwatch. This generates an expression that we can see here. I'm now going to change this expression. I'm going to parent this color to the color of the other background. And that color is accessible here in the effect control panel. So click on this icon, it looks like an at sign, and hold the button down and drag over to the start color that's defined here in the effect controls panel. Now check the expression. It changed and basically sets the value of this color to the start color of the gradient ramp effect that is applied to background one. Hit enter to apply the changes and unlock the effect controls panel. All right, I'm now going to add an adjustment layer, layer, new adjustment layer. In the effects and presets panel, search for Bezier and drag the Bezier warp effect to the adjustment layer. Select the Bezier warp effect in the effect controls. The Bezier warp handles shows up. 
I'm going to edit each point this way. Basically, I'm giving a slight curve effect to the bands. Um, okay, here we go. Now open the main composition and from the project panel drag both background 1 and background 2 to the bottom and make sure that background 1 is at the very bottom of the list. Set blending mode of background 2 to screen. If the blending mode does not show, hit F4 and the mode column will eventually appear. Select screen. Now you have it. We created a background using the fractal noise effect. Okay, but what if I want to change the original text? Or what if I did all this work to only realize now that I made a typo to my original text? I would have to start from scratch, right? Crazy feeling, <laughs> no? Well, no, we don't have to redo all this work. In fact, we can reuse most of what was done here. And really, the process is quite simple. Let's do this. It will take a couple of minutes. On the main composition, turn off the visibility of all layers. This will make things a bit clearer. Create a new text, let's say hi. Select the font and adjust the font size or else to what you want. I'll keep what I have here. I like to center things, so I do this using the align panel. Select the text, navigate to the menu layer and select pre-compose. Give the composition the name Letter Masks 2. We want to differentiate it from the existing Letter Masks. Uncheck Open New Comp and click OK. Letter Masks 2 shows between Letter Masks and Background 2. That's fine. Open Letter Masks 2, right click on the text and select Create Masks from Text. This generates a new layer. I now can remove the original text layer. Expand the layer and expand its masks. Notice we have four masks three characters, but four masks, because the exclamation mark has two mask paths. Duplicate the layer until you get four layers, as many layers as we have masks here. Rename each layer to the name of each mask. Select the layer, hit enter, and change the name. So I get H, I, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Select each layer and only keep the mask that corresponds to the layer name. So for H, I only keep H, for I, only I, and so on. Open the letter masks composition, that's the old letter masks comp that we created initially. Select any layer, I'm selecting the first one, copy the effect, navigate back to the letter masks 2 composition, select all layers and paste. This pastes the saber effect that I just copied from the old letter mask composition. The effect is now applied to these paths. Scrub through the timeline and notice any anomalies. Look for a few things. Verify the orientation and adjust if needed. To do so, select the layer or the layers that need to be fixed and hit M to expand their mask paths. Now select the mask paths that need to be fixed. Then head over to File, Scripts, and select Reverse Mask Path. Then verify where the drawing starts from. I want it to start from the top left of a shape. Ensure that Mask and Shake Path visibility is turned on. And verify each path and look for the first vertex location. I want to change its position here, so right-click this node and select Set First Vertex. And do so for each character. Navigate to the main composition, open the project panel. Within the project panel, select Letter Masks 2, hit Enter and rename it Letter Masks. Then select and delete the old Letter Masks composition. After Effects is warning me that the composition is in use, but I now want to use the new version instead, so I can go ahead and delete the composition. Enable the visibility icon for each layer and test. This is looking good. As you can see, once the bases are put in place, you can easily change the text and reuse the effect while reusing most of our work. Note that I can also change the location of any mask path or the shape of any of those paths. These are just masks after all, so they are fully editable. For instance, let's make this H a little fancier. Make sure to have mask and shake path visibility turned on. 
open the letter masks composition, select H. I'm going to zoom in a bit to get a better preview. I'll edit a few nodes. I'm going to adjust them. So let's edit the top nodes. Yeah, that looks quite good. And let's replicate what I did up here to the bottom nodes. Okay, that looks fancy. And perhaps even the dot of the exclamation mark. Okay, now back to main and check the results. Nice, eh? Oh, and one last thing. Why not turn the whole thing into this? Let's do that quickly. Open letter masks, select the first layer, head over to the effect controls panel. First of all, I want to keep the current color for my scene, select the color swatch and copy the current color. Now click on the preset drop down and change it to electric. Set glow intensity to 33%, spread to 0.06, bias to 1.6, core size to 0.3, core softness to 0.7. Back to the color swatch and hit paste. Copy the effect from the first layer, select the other layers and paste the effect. Switch to main and test. There it is. Okay, so we are getting pretty good results, I think. Uh, the effect starts at one second, the text draws over four seconds, the wall scene is bluish, that's fine. I showed you how to change the start time and the drawing duration of the text. They are used in expressions on the letter masks composition. Remember, select the first layer, hit EE to expand the end offset expression, and here I could change the start time and the drawing time if I wanted to. Then I'd apply the new effect to the other layers. Not too difficult. But what if I wanted to change the color? Notice the whole scene has a blue tint currently. How can I make it red, for instance? Well, I'll have to change the glow color on this layer, then I'd have to copy the new effect to each layer, and then I would also have to change the gradient color of the background. So anytime I want to tweak these effects, whether it's the color or any settings of the Saber effect, or the start time or the duration, I'll have to go through quite a few steps. In the next tutorials, I will show you how to use controls to, well, control these settings from a single click of a button instead of having to change them manually. I will also create a beam. This adds a bit more drama to our scene. So I hope that you learned a few tips. Please join me in the next tutorials. They go deeper into writing expressions, using expression controls, and into building your own pseudo effect.